Listen, I, I really want to start with congrats on the movie. Um, for You never know when you're making something what the reaction is going to be. Because I've seen films that are amazing get a negative reaction and, you know, things that I thought were terrible, people love. But so I'm curious, uh, you guys made a great movie and people think it's great. So what has it been like for you guys uh, with the audience reaction to the film? I mean, I suppose our first our first sense of an audience reaction was when we premiered at Sundance and it was it was on some level, um, it, it was an experience because it was 1,200 seat theater and we had never seen the audience with a, um, the movie with an audience before. So to, to, to be sitting in that audience and to see the movie on the big screen for the first time with that many people, you really get a sense of whether the audience liked the movie or not. Yeah. I and mean, there's no way of actually escaping that. And as a filmmaker, when you put so much te- care and attention uh, and love and hard work into a movie, <laughs> you know, you you just hope that people are going to respond to the movie and love it as much as you do. And I think broadly, that's what I felt when I sat there in Sundance that we that people were engaging with it in the right way. Yeah, that was its test screening. That was really the <laughs> test screening. <Yeah. laughs> and the like gasp of the majority of those audience yeah. members at the moment you want them to gasp was yeah. so satisfying. And the laughter, just, yeah, things landing. It was yeah. a, such a thrill. Yeah, I mean, if anything, I would just, I'm so, I'm so happy that we get to show this movie in cinemas because I think the shared experience, um, especially at certain key moments of the film, um, is really fun and satisfying and something that I haven't felt in a movie theater in a long time. Yeah, it really leaves people wrestling too with concepts of, you know, justice and responsibility and um, people don't leave often. The theater is what we've heard and what we've seen. People stay and they sit and they're, and they're quiet. And, uh, and I think it's like kind of a communal catharsis that's happening in the theater and, and also like leaving people to wrestle with some important concepts. Yeah. Good conversations. Yeah. Nice Christmas. And chat. it's and I, I found it very funny. I mean, I found the book funny. I found the script that you guys wrote very funny. But I also find the, the film yeah. funny. I mean, it's it's got a, it's a dark sense of humor, but um, it's worth saying that you know you, sh- you should find it funny as well. I mean, if, if you, yeah. you should, you should. You, must. you, 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 you should <laughs> in a sense like if it's working, it should be funny. Yeah. One of the things is that you guys made this as an indie. And I and I think that that allowed you guys to be able to do what you did with this film, because I, I do think if the studio had made this, um, you would not have been maybe as able to take a sharp left turn uh, the way that the film does without maybe more setup. Yeah. That's, that's, that's and I, I think we were really lucky that the three of us could uh, originate and develop this um, project. And everyone who signed on to work on it wanted to make this movie, not some other version of Eileen. Um, So we were all in it together. And there was never a moment where we questioned, you know, whether we had taken the right approach. It was always this is this is the story. This is the character. And we're not going to sand off any of the edges. Yeah. One of the things I'm fascinated by is the editing process because it's where anything comes together. So I'm curious, how did this film possibly change in the editing room in ways you didn't expect going in? Uh, well, I was lucky that the editor was present throughout the shoot. Um, I always find it helpful that Nick is the editor I've worked with twice now, once on Lady Macbeth and once on this film. And um, he's really the, uh, such an important collaborator for me. He's somebody I trust enormously. And so having him there while we were shooting, he could also then feed back not only because he's a fresh pair of eyes, he's not been part of the development process or the adaptation process. He's just really seeing what's coming to him each day on screen and he can then judge it sort of impartially, if you like. But also because every day then he can, we can watch the stuff together. We can make sure that it is coming together. He can cut it together. And if there's stuff that's missing, then we can go and get the extra shots. We can pick things up and as, as we go through. Um, I think the, the, our process is fairly straightforward. You know, we, we, we just follow the movie as it unfolds. We, li- we listen to the film that's in front of us. So we've had a process of d- developing the idea, the script has been written and the movie's been shot. And now the movie is the thing that's in front of us and we have to listen to what that thing needs. So it's, a very, it's very responsive in that sense to the requirements. Um, 
uh, you know, sometimes we have to sort of do things just to sort of refresh our own eyes, just shake it up a bit, change a few scenes around, move things about so that we can see it, see it afresh. But um, it's a, for me, it's it's important. It's a, a very, very important. And I, I feel privileged because not many people get to sit through an, a four or five month edit of a movie. Um, but I think it teaches you so much about filmmaking. I mean, I you know, I think that actors don't sit through it, the, the, the crew don't sit through um, the edit, but I wonder whether if they sat through something like that, they would understand a little bit about how, what I'm thinking about having been through one. You know, I'm, I'm thinking about what I'm going to be doing for the next four months while everyone goes on to their next job. And I'm sitting there thinking, wish I had this moment or I wish we had got that in a different way or something. It's, uh, it's one of the best and most exciting uh, aspects of filmmaking for me. Otessa, you, it's not often that the person who wrote the book gets to work on the screenplay. So talk a little bit about what it was like sort of editing your own material and trying to bring it into, you know, a 120 page script or however long it was. Well, it was exciting and um, <clears throat> really interesting to approach the material that I had written by myself with my partner, um, my co-writer, Luke Goebel, um, who, you know, uh, helped me see the story um, in a new way for cinema. The character got sort of more multidimensional in that uh, I was seeing her from the outside, whereas before I was just on her inside, sort of narrating through her. I'm curious, for, for both of you, the, the film, I love the way the film ends, uh, but I believe the book ends a different way. And uh, I'm curious how you guys decided without spoilers where you wanted the film to end. And did you ever think about something else? I mean, anytime that you adapt a, a first person narrative, I think there's the question of like, is this a voiceover? And I think we were all really um, impassioned, emphatic that it couldn't be a voiceover for several reasons. But we didn't want to end and we didn't want to begin with Eileen being safe. Um, there needed to be a danger and a concern for her as a character um, that not having a voiceover that tells us how she ends up and that, you know, she's succeeded in making it to old age um, was essential. And also we wanted all that pressure of the period and the location and the nature of, of Eileen that Thomason so perfectly captures that oppression and repression to be bottled up until Rebecca arrives on scene and this glamorous, enigmatic presence offers a sounding board for Eileen to reconsider who she could possibly be in this world. Well, I mean, I'm curious, when you looked at the schedule for what you needed to shoot, what was the day you had circled as to, I'm not sure how we're going to do this in the time frame we have? Uh, the basement, because it was uh, shot in a day. Uh, and that was uh, very, uh, very uh, tight uh, to shoot. I mean, what must be 10 minutes, I think? It must be like 10, 12 pages in a day. Yeah, I mean, it's sort of, it's, it's, you can, you can it, it's easy to think, oh, well, it's one scene. We can just shoot it in a day. It's like self-contained. But there were so many moving parts, so many elements of that scene, which we could break down and you could shoot over several days. I mean, um, yeah, that was a tough, tough day, not just because we were up against the clock, but because of what the actors had to go through to deliver those performances. It was, um, yes, and it was the penultimate day of the shoot as well. So everyone was quite tired by that point. <laughs> uh, I can't believe you shot that in a day, yeah. uh, but it also helps when you have great actors doing the scene. That's true. No, it's, it's really a testament to them, yeah. For all three of you, I always, of course, like to ask about what you're working on now. So let me ask, what are you guys excited for for next week, uh, next week, next year? <laughs> Is there anything that you're working on? Well, and next week, we were all working together. In yeah. fact, we liked each other so much through this process that we decided to try and make another one together. Oh, is that true? Yeah. 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 Uh, are you a... Are you adapting another book? No, it's an original idea. It's an original screenplay based on the sort of facts of a woman's life from the middle of the last century. Yeah. A woman who was accused of witchcraft. She was a psychic medium and uh, inadvertently was contacted by a dead sailor and revealed the whereabouts of a sunk naval battleship, which got into a lot of trouble. And so 
She was then accused of witchcraft in the Old Bailey, tried and convicted, in fact, using the Witchcraft Act of 1735. In England. In England, it happened, yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, first of all, that sounds cool. And second of all, I have to wrap. I'm just going to say that congrats on this. I look forward to seeing whatever you guys are doing next. And thank you for giving me your time. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you.